identity theft is unfortunately a common problem now. Yeah, we were just talking with someone last weekend about how they came back from holiday to find that their identity had been stolen and they were having to get new credit cards and get thousands of dollars back and it was a really big deal. Mm -hmm. But we're talking now about your emotional identity and, and having mm -hmm. that being stolen is a lot more common than you think. So today we want to explain to you how to get your emotional identity back. But first, let's talk about how you get your identity in the first place. Well, that starts from, from the moment you're born or even before you're born. When your parents are speaking to you and talking to you, even as a very small infant, how they talk to you and treat you, how they demonstrate their love to you, you know, everything that is spoken to you or even the, the looks you get are, are, can really affect how your identity is formed. We were talking with our son on Zoom um, before Christmas and we were in the middle of this conversation and then his two-year-old decided that she wanted to demonstrate for us how well she could run. So she was running around the kitchen, around the kitchen, through the kitchen, around the island and then back again. And we and we watched her and said, oh, you can run very well. And then we went back to our conversation and then just a few minutes later, she interrupted our conversation and said, celebrate me. And she really, really wanted to be acknowledged mm -hmm. for how well she could run because she needed to have those positive words spoken over her. Mm -hmm. That's right. And so the way you're, the words spoken to you, the way you're treated, so even like before you um, go start going to school, but then at school, the way your peers treat you, the way your teachers treat you, uh, authority figures, all of these things shape your identity or how you see yourself. And so if you come from a really negative home, if your parents were really struggling and so that they just, they weren't very encouraging or they were criticizing or when you brought home a report card, it's like, you know, you're, you're, you know, how come you're not as good as the neighbor kid, you know, cause, or maybe you know, or some, some parents have even said, you know, you're just too stupid. You'll never amount to anything. Well, that just words, words, especially from your parents or any authority figure, but mostly your parents, that can just wreck your self-esteem, self-confidence, self-image, um, and it just it, it can be very shattering or it molds your personality in a very negative way. Yeah, because you grow up thinking, well, I'm really no good, that I really have nothing to offer anyone because no one who is supposed to love me and tell me who I am really appreciates me. In fact, I'm not even sure I'm worth it to be in this family or that I'm, I'm loved. And I, we find that that affects people. It doesn't just stop in childhood. These kinds of, this way of thinking will, will travel with us um, through our teen years, into our young adults, and even up into 60s and 70 year olds. I've prayed with people who have struggled with this their entire lives. Yeah, think of it that, that the way you're spoken to and the way you're treated, especially in childhood, it molds you, molds your personality, and that mold doesn't change uh, throughout the rest of your life. So even, let's just say, even if you're a very successful, let's say financially adult, in the back of your mind, you're always replaying the tapes or the recordings of what you heard as a child that are undermining your identity, self-esteem and confidence. And so that's why it's so important to recognize if that's happened to you, because Jesus can heal that and reshape you. It, it certainly can. Pain can make you um, want to hide. You'll, you'll want to put up a mask or create a mask that is more pleasing to the rest of the world because, you know, if, if those people who love you, your family say you're not good enough, well, then I need to put on a false front so that everybody else can see who I should be. And, and that becomes a really difficult place to hide because, or to place to be because then you always feel like you have to hide. You can never be your real self. You always are trying to pretend to be someone else, and, and that is no fun. Yeah, it's, well, it's the problem of shame, actually, because um, if a person is experiencing shame, they're, they're not embarrassed so much about what they did. They're embarrassed about who they are, which is their identity. And so why is this problem so common? Well, it's because we have a spiritual enemy who never wants you to know who you really are. And so what he does is he arranges these traumatic events in childhood. And then when, when emotionally painful things happen, he whispers all of these hurtful conclusions into your mind to convince you um, 
that, that you are a loser, that you really don't matter to anyone, that you really are unlovable, you never will amount to anything. And he just loves to keep those lies active. You see, he wants to drive a wedge between you and God. That's his ultimate plan. He wants you to just have uh, lose all your self-confidence and just think, well, God's not, even God's rejected me because I'm not good enough. So he just loves to drive that wedge. And so Jesus wants to set you free from that. Yeah, so you know, the way you can figure out who you really are is begin talking to the one who knows you best, which is Jesus. And all you have to do is begin to say, well, I'd, I'm choosing to not believe what I've been raised with. And instead, I'm going to ask Jesus what he says I am. And it can be really simple as saying, I renounce all the lies that say that I'm no good, that I'm not second best, that I'm not worthy, and I'm, I'm, I'm never going to amount to anything. Jesus, what do you have to say about that? Jesus, who do you say I am? I was praying with someone recently, and, and when we asked Jesus that question, he said, you are a beloved child. And, and when you look at scripture, that's what it says. In scripture, he says, you are my child. And, and, and there's no condemnation. The pearl and, of great price. Pearl of great price. All of these wonderful promises and declarations in scripture. And, and what we need to do is start getting rid of and canceling the lies that have told us that we're no good and start believing the truth that's in the scripture about what, what we are and who we are so that we have a, can come into agreement with our new identity in Jesus. I mean, he, Jesus loves you so much, that's why he came, became, became a man, and he died to set you free. Mm -hmm. And so Jesus knows who you are. In fact, if you were the only person on the planet, he would have come and died to set you free from your sins. And so you are incredibly valuable to him, but the enemy doesn't want you to recognize Absolutely that because not. if you recognize who you really are, you become unstoppable. And, and he wants you to always be beaten down. And so the, Jesus wants to, to heal all those wounds from the past. He wants to reverse all those lies that you were fed, that you believed, and replace it with his truth of who you really are. In fact, we're going to put a link uh, below this video to a list of scriptures that actually list all the things that the Bible says about who you really are. And it's the uh, Who I Am in Christ uh, page from the Freedom in Christ ministry. And we have found that to be so helpful because the Bible is full of statements of who you really are the way God sees you. And so uh, Jesus can set you free. And we but have... you know, it can be really hard to change this, this mm -hmm. lifelong uh, way of believing. And so this is where you might need to see a counselor who can help you recognize what you're believing that's that's incorrect and and how to move forward to to adopting truth about yourself but prayer ministry finding someone who can pray with you and help you dismantle the lies and and accept the truth these are really really helpful um, options that are out there in the world today so you know put up your attendance send us a note and say where can i find this help because we'd love to put you in touch with people who would be able to help you in this way. And because lots of people aren't able to access that uh, those services, we've actually created an online yeah, it's a really good self-study personal healing and transformation program that will walk you through how to recognize the wounds, recognize the lies, and replace them with God's truth. So it's called Free Your Mind, and that's our online self-study transformation program. And there will be links below this video so you can come and investigate that. And you can walk through that process with us. We'd love to help you. So we'll talk to you next week.